Hallo und herzlich willkommen zurück zu einer weiteren Folge Chaos Head Noah. Also ich hoffe, dass er jetzt die Aufnahme hat. Zumindest blinkt er da unten. Hat er die Aufnahme oder nicht? Okay, doch. Doch, er zeigt mir rot an, dass er die Aufnahmen, dass er gerade aufnimmt. Also sollte er es eigentlich haben. Gut. Äh, beim letzten Mal Taku ja seine Unterlagen, nenne ich sie jetzt mal, durchgeforstet und festgestellt, dass viele der Sachen, die ihm jetzt quasi auf die Füße fallen, offenbar schon in einem Aufsatz aus seinen, aus seinen Grundschultagen äh, drin standen. Also vor allem zwei wichtige Punkte. Einmal die Formula von mit IAL2 oder IA2 und dann Fun dieses Ding und äh, dieses mit Who's Eyes, Asus Eyes und jetzt sind wir wieder zurück in bei im Büro von Momose und wahrscheinlich mit Ban also Ban ist ja definitiv hier und Yua dürfte wahrscheinlich auch noch da sein within the fresh air reception room or rather the narrow space partition <coughs> off by a few shelves being used as one Ban said deep in concentration Scanning through a number of flies, files. Ah ja, stimmt ja. Der siebte New Gen Mord ist ja auch passiert. Aber ich glaube, das war noch in der Folge davor. Ich bin mir gar nicht sicher. Opposite to him said you are huddled up and making herself smart. She had been taking frequent glances at Bun in an attempt to read his expression. From an outside perspective, it appeared almost like a child showing their parents a report card. Ben was currently reading the report of everything you had investigated concerning the new gen cases and new Nisijo Takumi. It also includes that the chat log between Takumi and Shogun from the day prior had to the crucifixion case. As a result of her findings, you had concluded that Takumi was undoubtedly the true culprit behind the new gen cases. It's <laughs> Yua hung her head apologetically in response to Momosa's praise. She, she, sta she stared at the garu froggy strips hanging from the back below her feet. She was speaking with a detective and the boss of an investigation firm. In terms of, of investigation, they were as professional as one could get. Compared to the provost and information gathered by the investi investigation of an ordinary high school girl would be akin to childish scribblings. And yet, despite the supposed gap, Ben and Momose found that was both impressed by the quality of the report. なかなかいい着眼点だ。よく調べたな。とりわけこの西条匠の多重性ってのが興味深い。西条匠は多重人格であり、オリジナルとなった西条匠の人格が眠っている時、つまり他の人格が活動中に事件を起こしている。ああ、本当に思うわ。まあ、でもちょっとばかり現実離れしすぎてるかな。Not just you, but Mumusi gaped in amazement as well. A wry smile formed on Ban's lips. He leaned back in the seat and rested the back of his head in his hands. Nishijo,白だ。遺体を貼り付けていた杭には指紋がべったり付着してたな。西条の指紋を手に入れて照合してみたんだが、全く合致しなかった。<laughs> you was turning paler by the second. Her lips trembled. Yup. Yup, you are. Dir wird gerade klar, dass du eben ein, eines Mordes bezichtigt hast, den er nicht, get, dass er nicht getan hat. Now that everything she had believed and had collapsed beneath her feet, feelings of guilt at the awful things she had said to Takmi encroached upon her heart. <laughs> まだマスコミにも公表してないけどな 
あちなみにそれツワのお手柄だったりするツワちゃんは頑張ってるっていうのにバンちゃんはよくここでのんびりしていられるわね実はあれ捜査本部から外されたんだわはあ本来の捜査サボって G レートのこととか調べてんの上司にバレちゃってな<笑> This was the reason why his subordinate Silva had been the one to inform him of the seven incidents. There had been no reason for anyone else to call an investigator that was no longer working the case. Anta ne, motto umak tachi mari na sai yo. Ma ban chan ni, G rate no koto oshita watashi ni mo seki ni wa aru kedo. Keni sun na te. Sore ni, G rate no ken wa kojin teki ni mo kini na te dan da. Ah. Ma. 西城にしても貼り付け以外の事件じゃまだ捜査線上にいるもしかするとユアちゃんの推理が正しいかもしれんニュージェネはドイツ派による連続殺人事件じゃないって警察は考えてるのまだ何とも思ただついさっき第7の事件が起きたようだしな個人的には犯人は複数いると思ってフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフフ青いセナってこう知ってるかい君の同級生のはずなんだがセナうん。Das Mädchen, was einfach so im Bild aufgetaucht ist, mit dem Schwert rumgefuchtelt hat und wieder verschwunden ist. Auf einer Überwachungskamera. After pulling for a moment, your shocker had apologetically. Nein, nein, nein. Ah, so. その人が犯人なんですかああ、全くの別件だ。昨日徹夜したのもその子のことを調べてたからでな。あんた、さっき女子高生の生態がどうとかって。ふふふ。ももさえば、received a wink and a grin from Ben before he turned back to what you are。例えば。学校でものすごい手品を使う女生徒がいるって噂を聞いたことはい,いえありませんけどさっぱり話が見えないわね<笑>何のこと例えば何もない空間から剣を取り出すような手品とか<笑> You are said snapped up, but her expression was one of blatant astonishment. Despite being the one to ask the question, Ben also had a look of surprise on his face. You are hesitating, then after a moment, nodded resolutely. Sie hat es gesehen. Joa hat es gesehen. Joa briefly recounted her dramatic pursuit from around two weeks prior. How she had gone to a manga cafe to meet Nishijo Takumi. How she had been a little forceful when talking to him, causing him to flee. How she had frantically chased him around Shibuya. How he had then managed to evade her. And how right when she was about to give up, she had stumbled upon Takumi and I was entering the underpass. <laughs> だから私、その階段の上から2人の様子をこっそり伺っていたんです。2人は階段の一番下で何か話していて。あ、えっと、どんなことを話していたかは聞き取れなかったんですけど。そしたら、突然、岸本さんが、剣を何もないところから取り出したんです。すごく大きな剣で。バックにも入らないようなまさか俺が見たものと同じだな<笑>え
俺が見たのは岸本じゃなかったかさっき名前を出した青井セナっていう少女だ実は青井が剣を振り回してたっていう目撃証言が渋谷のあちこちから出てるその手品渋谷の若い子たちの間で流行ってるのかしら<笑>でも私が見たあれは手品にはとても見えませんでしたそれに他にも何か見たの信じてもらえるかどうかわからなくて誰にも話したことはないんですけどあの時岸本さんは剣を出しただけじゃなくて You are throughout the fight and she slowly licked, licked her lips She looked lost on whether or not she should continue her eyes darted around the room But the man she, she steered her reserve and fixed her gaze upon one. Futarini. Bunshin. Standis. Marude. Hontoni sonobani futari irumitai de sta. Watashi. Wakega wakaranakte. A heavily silence covered the reception room. All three within it were at a complete loss for words. とにかく、一体どんな種があるのかわかんないが、そんな手品みたいな真似ができる連中が、この渋谷には何人かいるらしい。<笑>まあそれと、岸本綾瀬も、青い瀬名も、西条匠と接触したことは確認済みだ。これが偶然とは思えねえわけよ。西条くん。あの少年の周囲では、もう現実離れしたことばかりが起きてるような気がする。いや、ほっぱ、ぶっちゃいぶっちゃいぶっちゃいぶっちゃいぶっちゃいぶっちゃいぶっちゃいぶっちゃいぶっちゃいぶっちゃいぶっちゃいぶっちゃいぶっちゃいぶっちゃいぶっちゃいぶっちゃいぶっちゃいぶっちゃいぶっちゃいぶっちゃいぶっちゃいぶっちゃいぶっちゃいぶっちゃいぶっちゃいぶっちゃい Then, as she brought the cup back down, she put a smile and asked someone of the medicine to change the topic. Tokoro de Yuacha, Sono Cabani Brasa had the Kairu. Saki Hayatin in the show? Oh, hi. You are gave a sigh of relief, having been saved by the kind company resident. Not the Yundake. Gero Kairu, this. You know, you're a shirry at the Tin Janakata, you shirry grab. はい私はその友達からもらっただけなので詳しくは知らないんですけどなんだってこんな手抜き商品が流行るんだろうな見た目だって俺の方がずっとかわいいぞバン<笑>ちゃん寝言は寝てから言いなさい<笑>冗談って<笑>私も実はそのどうして流行っているのかよくわからないんですあら結構かわいと思うけどねももちゃんの見る目も衰えたなセロンは私の方が正しいって証明してるじゃないバ<笑>ンちゃんも買いに行った方がいいわよ一体どこへ行けば買えるものなんだえっとゲロカエルの専門ショップがあちこちにあって専門ショップだそこで金曜日に行列に並べば買えると思います金曜日毎週金曜日に新しいデザインのものが発売になるんです好きな子はえっとコンプリートとか言って全部集めてるみたいであの Where you are was in the midst of speaking Ben had turned to Momo to write stretching the stubble on his chin. Kinyo. Hmm. I heard it was a moe nae mo ma hayatte. Kicked her out of the bindung kin? Kire to a mai shu matsu ni joshu suru. Klingt so. Masaka Ban-chan. Adatte miru kachi wa aru ka. <lacht> Jupp, er hat die Verbindung gemacht zwischen 
den Geofroggies und, und der GE Raid. Hey Taco, bist du wieder da? The second I poked my head into school on first the Miss McCune immediately invited me to go see I ascend the hospital with him. Given that the idea hadn't even crossed my mind, I, it had caught me off guard. But before I'd even been able to respond, Rumi said she wanted to come too for whatever reason, and I ended up being swept along with her as a result. <laughs> Now, let me be clear, I, s I had a heart in the all. <laughs> But I consider considering the menace known as Shogun was drawing closer and closer to me, I didn't think this was exactly the time to show it. I didn't wanna die. Coming in through the front entrance, Misumi Kun looked around the lobby in confusion. Had he seriously come this far without knowing that this guy was beyond belief sometimes? <laughs> ah, Tokyo General Hospital. It was the hospital I'd gone to ever since I was a kid. I had even come here just the other day, so I was pretty knowledgeable on where, where, on where every, everything was. Dr. Takashina's face flashed across my mind and I involuntarily groaned to myself. As we walked to the hospital ward, Mr. Mikun turned to me. De This was a general hospital, so there were obviously a ton of different wards and apartments if I had to guess. There hadn't been any visible injuries on ISA after she had fallen. And considering she had attempted suicide, her mind had likely been brought to the brink, so her being the Psychiatric ward seemed very possible. Even I had been taken to the psych ward after the uproar at O Front. I don't think it's necessarily common sense. I might not have known if I d hadn't come here so many times in the past. Right as we were entering the hospital, what we ground to a halt. With a wave of her hand, Rimi quickly headed back towards the outpatient ward. Thinking that running around the ward would cause problems for the patients, we decided to ask for help at the nurse's station. And just like I had predicted, they told us that she was on the floor for psychiatric patients. Das Schwert. Und komm, direkt kicken wir uns wieder die schöne Delusion rein, die grüne. The hospital room had an area of around 10 square meters. There was a toilet to the right of the entrance and there was a bed near the back. The setting sh sun shone through the window on the other side of the room. I still wasn't in the bed. Based on how the sheets were a little messed up, it looked like she had been there until very recently. Okay, verschwommen. The moment he said that, Miss Mikun started rummaging around the room for some reason. He didn't even have a shred of decency. Right now, it wouldn't be wrong to refer to this as IRC's room. A number of health things were lying around and mixed with the smell of antiseptic was that nice scant you could only find in the girl's room. <laughs> Woher, woher will Taku das bitte sehr wissen? Ich glaube, er war maximal bisher bei seiner Schwester im Zimmer. Wenn überhaupt. Und ansonsten glaube ich nicht bei keinem einzigen Mädchenraum. Just kind of bursting into it while she wasn't there. Felt like we were peeping right into her private life. And they didn't feel very comfortable with it. So, so you know, you can hear. So to them, ma 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 so was finde ich immer ein Unding, muss ich ehrlicherweise sagen. Lasst den Leuten doch ihr Privatleben, egal wie bekannt sie sind. 
Geht den Leuten nicht auf den Senkel. Lasst sie doch einfach in Frieden und Ruhe ihr Leben leben. Und, und den anderen Idioten, die unbedingt Aufmerksamkeit haben möchten, dem braucht man auch keine zu geben, finde ich. Zum Großteil zumindest. <lacht> Okay, sure. I asked his personal life was, to was a total mystery. Surely a quick glance wouldn't be so bad. Miss McCune wasn't showing even an ounce of hesitation. Urged on by his bold attitude, my mind swiftly changed. I turned to look at the door to make sure no one was coming. Then turned back towards the room. Feeling my heart thump hard in my chest, I, sh I started... With the bed, I took hold of the slightly ruffled sheets. And then, having no idea what to expect, I gently turned them over, and what I saw was something beyond imagination. Yeah, nee, it's clear. Hidden beneath the sheets was lingerie, a full set of lingerie. A pair of purple panties were scrunched up haphazardly. They had very clearly been taken off recently. This wasn't brand new condition. This was fully entirely used. Foo hee hee. And this was a private room, from that one could only gleam. But Ayase was the only one who could have worn these. So, oh man, eh. I heard the turn to check him on Miss Mikum he was too busy flipping through a magazine to have noticed my shocking discovery. I returned my glance to the underwear. I gulped my throat and as dry as a desert. My trembling fingers and almost entirely on the end reach towards the underwear. Feeling my pulse getting quicker and quicker, I ever so softly touched them. For some reason they felt squishy, physically. Something wasn't quite right about this. What the heck? I suddenly realized Miss Mikun was calling me. I was standing in the I was standing in the corner of the hospital room. The bed sheets weren't turned over and there was obviously no sexy lingerie inside. Phew, I'd been just in delusion, huh? It ended with an extremely horrifying twist. So I would make sure that memory remained for forever sealed. He had taken a magazine from high up on the shelf and was staring at it fixedly. <laughs> New was a magazine that focused on all facets of the occult. UFOs, aliens, ESPs, ESP, religion, urban legend, mysterious phenomena, super ancient civilizations, OOP, arts, etc. It wasn't difficult at all to believe that in our very own Jesus shit loving IRC would be reading it. I wasn't familiar with that specific book, but the term Gladio did ring a bell. Where had I heard it again? I was pretty sure it had been pretty recent. Kishimoto,付き合うとなると、この趣味に合わせないといけないのか。大変そうだぜ、これは。Had he still not given up on dating Ayase, even after being turned down in an instant last time? Huh? Suddenly Ayase's d sword came into view within the corner of my eye. It was leaning against the window. It looked like a space battleship ripped right out, out of a sci-fi movie. My opinion on it hadn't really s changed either. It was an awesome looking sword, possessing equal parts beauty and cruelty. Even though it wasn't glowing, and even though it was just leaning against the window, it still had the typical impressive feeling of presence to it. Misumi Kun showed no signs of noticing the thought. Huh. So the eyes of normal people couldn't see them after all. I wonder, if I were to take it without ISS knowing, would the thought become mine? <laughs> ich glaube nicht, Junge. If I could really obtain a desert with zero effort, then there was no time to waste here. The desert to do so bubbled up within me. If a girl ultimately ever said to me reached out for the sword, I grasped the hilt. Or oh, well, I tried to grasp it. But my hand had gone right through it, leaving me grasping only thin air. 
I tried once more, but the result was no different. I couldn't grab it, I couldn't even touch it. Did that mean that the sword wasn't rebooted? As mutual recognition hadn't been achieved, it was no more than IRC's delusion. An illusion, a dream, an, an afterimage. None of the law? Oh my. Miss Miko looked at me in confusion. Ich kann mir vorstellen, dass wir jetzt auf dem Dach sind. We then waited for around 10 minutes, but as they still showed no signs of coming back. Same thing with Remy. She was still in the bathroom, apparently. Where could she actually gone? Where could she have actually gone? Mm -hmm. Oh. We had asked for the location at the nurse station after Remy had left. She could very well be wandering all throughout the hospital as we spoke. Not having any idea where we were or where this place was. I felt uneasy not being with me. I couldn't say for sure that the hospital was safe. If Shogun were reading my mind right now, he would have known that I was here. Despite what I had said, my face was still flushed. Me and Remy dating? It was true that I had delusions of that many times. I hadn't been interested in 3D in the past, but nowadays Remy was becoming more and more important to me with every passing day. But back when Remy had said she would stay by my side, she had also said the following. Friends. Mm, friends owned. Fuck you. So ungefähr. In other words, she only saw me as a friend. There was no way in hell she would want to start a romantic relationship with an otaku freak like me. Besides, we would probably be a bit slow on the uptake with that kind of thing. I split ways with Misumi Kun and went to look for Rimi or Ayase. Misumi Kun had gone downstairs, so I decided to take my search above. Amisha! I passed by an older patient in the corridor, probably around his 50s. He was standing down the hallway calling out to someone named Amichan over and over. I ignored him and headed farther in the corridor, into the corridor. Nobody seemed to mind me wandering around the hospital, maybe since I used to come here pretty often. But for every corner I turned and every yeah, and for every door I saw open, I felt my heart rate increased at the thought of Shogun appearing from them. And not only that, but the occasional cries, screams and cries coming from any number of directions weren't exactly good for my mental state. The corridor was uniformly dyed a cream color. Some of the rooms were open, some were closed, and to make sure that there were no signs of Shogun being around, I peeked into a whole bunch of them. Each room had two beds lined up next to the other, next to each other, with person-shaped branches lying underneath. The sheets likely sleeping patient. And then leave the sheets. Likely sleeping. Uh, but the faces were always in the blind spot, so I couldn't see them. There weren't many people walking through the corridors. Just the man calling for Amichan and the single nurses were the only two I had passed by. I didn't really want to be here. I didn't know why, but that feeling refused to leave. The atmosphere was heavy. It wasn't oppressive per se, but I had the nagging feeling that I shouldn't have been there. A little farther in the front of me, the corridor meant a 90 degree turn to the right. That the hospital rooms continue through there, I wondered. As I pondered that, I cautiously turned the corner. And I was immediately met with a wall. It sat in the middle of my path. In vast contrast to the entire, entirely cream colored hospital, it was covered in black paint from the top to bottom. A complete dead end. <laughs> For some reason I didn't know. My pulse quickened. 
I couldn't move even a single step from where I stood. My vision Robert in shock. Thinking it was vertigo, I tried to close my eyes and massage my eyelids with my fingertips only to feel my eyeballs twitching beneath them. A chill as cold as ice crawled up over my feet. I stood dead in my tracks, forgetting how to even breathe, staring at the black in front of me. It felt as if it would suck me in, as if, as if it would swallow me whole. A deep, never-ending darkness. Even though there shouldn't have been anyone there, it felt like somewhere someone was watching me. God's gaze pierced into the nape of my neck. Its presence was a complete different level compared to how it would be at my base. Don't look. <laughs> Nothing all my to think I managed to close my eyes. Finally, I finally was able to breathe again and I stepped back while gasping for breath. With my head facing down towards the ground, I fled the through the corridor. I sped back to the floor of Isis' room, gasping and wheezing all the way. I touched the nape of my neck and felt a sticky sweat oozing from it, but the sweat wasn't just coming from there. My entire body was drenched in it. What the hell was going on? Was Shogun reading my mind? The presence of God's gaze wouldn't go away. Why my wheezing and shivering refused to calm down? Exhaustion had devoured my, mo my motivation in, in an instant. I wanted to go home. I wanted to have Rumi take care of me as we looked ourselves. Sorry, as we looked ourselves in my base. It wasn't like me visiting IRC would make me work my care happy. If anything, it would probably do the complete opposite. I was an idiot for coming along with me, Sumikun. The guy clearly had an agenda, and it was at complete odds with me. I had no reason to be here. Und ich würde sagen, an dem Punkt beende ich diese Folge. Vielen Dank fürs Zuschauen und bis zum nächsten Mal.